everybody. Katie Halbert couldn't join us this week, but the media still had plenty of fails that we really needed to cover. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> Sagar and I are going to tackle some of their greatest epic fails of the week. All right, it's numero uno. This was from Chuck Todd. This is a very, very special one. Let's take a listen. He can't understand why Bernie Sanders is the front runner. <laughs> well, did it? Because who's the front runner? Right, the guy, who's guy winning delegates? I know, but no, but but is he the front runner? He does certainly not get in the press as a front runner. And and the problem is, the, the I, I I don't understand how Bernie is considered a front runner. This is a guy that has more you know, more people showed up to the polls, highest turnout ever, and his percentage went down, not up. Yeah, his total number went down, not up. And new voters actually voted for Betty Judge and Klobuchar. Right. Now, the oh, thing God. that was really great about this yeah. is that I think literally the day after he said that, a new national poll came out with Bernie Sanders leading by 10, 10 points. points. It's like, you get it yet? He got the most votes in the He's first like, oh, two whoa. states. He didn't get enough votes. because, And it's like, dude, there are 10 other people. Uh, again, it's like... <laughs> This is the most stupidest way to argue. They're literally like looking for every little scrap of information that they can possibly find, which is like, oh, well, maybe this one thing cast out. It's like, listen, the front runner is the guy who wins the first two contest. That's <laughs> He's winning. That's why you're the front runner. That's how we define these things. And then you have, you know, Jeremy Peters over at the New York Times, also an MSNBC contributor, uh, who's like, oh, there's no possible way to say that Pete Buttigieg is not the front runner in this race. And I'm like, this is insane. Like, you this is literally a brain worm that requires you to, uh, to short circuit in order to give credit to whoever's winning. Like, we're supposed to be objective. The guy's winning. Just yeah, say it. Right. Like, and if, if he wasn't, we would say it yeah, here. Totally. You know, we yeah. have said Who it here. Who defended Joe Biden's uh, status as front runner going into so Iowa, long. New Hampshire more than this show? Right. Who, I don't well, like and, Joe Biden. And we put Elizabeth Warren as the front runner when she was leading in the national polls. Exactly. And so it's yeah. not complicated or hard. That's yeah. the way things work. And But also, related to that, this was funny, too. So, yeah. you know, New Hampshire, they weren't able to rig the primary to give it to Pete Buttigieg. <laughs> Bernie actually won, so they couldn't deny yeah. that, right? So what did they do the very next day rather than leading with new hampshire had just right. happened that night before rather than leading with new hampshire primary results over on cnn what are they what do? are they doing they're going off about oh all these prosecutors resigned of roger stone political you know, this is what our political class is obsessed with a week after donald trump is acquitted in the United States Senate. Now they're trying to make this into the new thing. It's like, how many times do you people have to learn? Mueller, I mean, uh, good Lord. I mean, before that, I didn't even know what it was, but it was like, oh, the, the uh, Russia report from the, DNC, from the DNI, then Mueller, then the Mueller report, then the Mueller testimony, then impeachment, Ukraine gate. Now this, Roger Stone, oh, a bunch of prosecutors, our entire DOJ is completely, it's like, guys, there's a New Hampshire primary that just happened which can solve the actual problem. That, right. Like, they want Trump out, right? right. That's the implicitness of like, this, right? Fine. Okay, There's cover the election. There's a literally unfolding right now it's that could end with him leaving office. The stupidest thing that, you know, CNN in Have particular. Have you seen people calling for impeach him again? Yeah, of That's course the they are. They're like, oh, well, Conway we got to like, spin oh, this whole God. thing up. Let's go. <laughs> uh, this is the thing. They're all so <laughs> invested in this grift because they're all making a lot of money. Who the hell is George Conway if he can't be on MSNBC talking about impeachment? Who is Tom Nichols? All these other complete grifters whenever well, it comes to the, it's called like the impeachment have, grift state. Look, I don't yeah. like Donald Trump. I don't think yeah. what he did in Ukraine was okay. But why do I have such contempt for this process? Because at the same time that Pelosi and Schiff et al. are like, oh, he's the most dangerous right. president. He's a fascist and all this stuff. Then they're handing him new war powers, handing him a blank check on the surveillance state, handing him a big win on a trade deal. It's like, right. way to resist. Guys. That's what you Great and Aaron job. Mate always talk about. And you're right. It's a fundamental incoherent and inconsistency of this entire thing, and it belies the fact they don't believe anything. They're just as big corporatists as everybody else. That's what it's all about. It's about who gets to control oligarchy rather than removing it all. And it's the sole civility yeah. politics, which is ultimately so right. hollow, but it's the thing that they can go after him on that they are not also completely mm -hmm. implicated yeah. in. So there you go. There you go. All right. Thanks for watching, guys. We'll have more for you after this.